Hey, this is Tom Nash. Quick video reacting to Bill Ackman issuing an important warning about inflation, economy, stock market, a lot of interesting things he said, a lot of hints, a lot of subtext, a lot of bullshit, a lot of things he got right. I'm going to be reacting to everything in this video. As you can see on the screen, I got it lined up. But before we do, just listen to me here for a second. If you're not familiar with Bill Ackman, this isn't his first rodeo. If he's on mainstream media, there's definitely an agenda. You just don't know it yet. In fact, anybody who's in the mainstream media has an agenda, and probably for the most part, retail doesn't know it before it's too late. So anything this man says, anything anybody says on mainstream media, anything anybody says on YouTube, take it with a grain of salt. We all have agendas. Now, having said that, I'm going to be reacting objectively as far as I can to what he just said. Before we do that, as always, remember, everything I say here is just my own opinion, doing research, might be inaccurate, might be wrong, might be wrong as a madman. This isn't some sort of financial advice, just me sharing my opinion, okay? Let's move on. Let's talk about what Bill actually said. Current take about the economy itself, but also where the stock markets are in terms of fairly valued or not. Yeah, I think the economy is actually quite strong right now. You know, the question is where it's gonna be in six months and 12 months, um, but you know, we're at full employment, there are plenty of jobs available, you know, wages are going up. Um, you know, Howard Hughes, uh, the company we own, is opening a uh, a kind of food hall, the John George Food Hall, hall uh, at the South Street Seaport. We've had to hire 600 people, and they've been working really hard to do it. We've only hired 350 people in the last, you know, a couple of months. So if you're looking for a job, there's a good one there. So I, I think. <laughs> so first of all, as always, as always, I sped it up a little bit, uh, 1.25 speed. Sorry, Bill. Look. As always, the agenda comes out. I don't know if this was the only reason he came on the show, but he needs to hire a couple hundred employees. What better way, what better avenue than CNBC to do that? I don't know if this is the main agenda or it was just teasing it with just some sort of a high side hustle. I don't know. But right there and there, you know, a bill being bill. Although I don't think it's his main thing, to be honest. I, it's just a kind of a funny anecdote. But mind what he's saying here. He's saying everything is great. The job market is great. The economy is great for now. When he said for the next six to 12 months, that's the hint he dropped. I don't know if you guys caught it or not, but go back and watch this from the beginning. I'm going to post the link in the description. He said, for now. When somebody says everything is great for now, it usually means there's pain coming. So he's saying, hey, 2022 is going to be great. 2023, whoo, that's a whole different enchilada. I think the economy itself is very strong. I had the opportunity to see Jamie Dimon this weekend. I apologize, I do. I still am a little congested from... Uh, from COVID, and Jamie talked about number one. This is the the lowest default rate period in history uh, for the consumer. Uh, hey, I'm going to call bullshit on this. Uh, house loans, which is what Jamie Dimon, I assume, is talking about, since he's uh, you know a bank. Uh, that's a lagging indicator. They're the ones to go last. Uh, when you have cash flow issues, you're not going to default on your house. That's the last thing you're going to default on. What you're going to default first on is your car. And there's a Barron's article from just a couple of weeks ago, which shows for the past two years, the reposition percentage on car loans has doubled. So car loans are in the toilet. That's the first indicator. There's a cascading effect here. There's a pecking order. So if car loans are doubling for the past, sorry, car loans, repositions and defaults are doubling over the past two years, uh, that means that homes are probably next, but it hasn't happened yet. So it means we're on that spectrum somewhere from this point cars to this point homes. We're just not here yet, but we might be just, you know, just a second before. Remember that. So I call it bullshit on what he just said. Part of the bank. And that uh, they're, they're full spectrum of people that they, you know, uh, support rich, that bank with J.P. Morgan and Chase and so on, uh, are in the best position they've ever been. So I think we've got, you know, well-capitalized consumers for the most. Again, I don't think people are in the best position they've ever been in 2022. I think that's absolute horseshit. Part, although I do think lower income people are getting a lot of pressure from our gas prices. Another horse shit for me because uh, saying that low income people have a you know uh, a tougher time, whatever it is he said, I don't know. It's just kind of condescending. I mean, I understand you're a billionaire, that's fine. Uh, lower income people are suffering. That's just God's honest truth. I mean, gasoline prices, food prices, housing prices. Uh, look at what Walmart just said. Walmart said, hey, nobody's spending anything on you know diddly squat except for food and gasoline. We can't sell apparel, we can't sell electronics. Why? Because people don't have anything left. Their free disposable income is pretty much zero. So low income people are getting hammered right now. They're not feeling the pressure. They're getting hammered. And I think it needs to be said correctly because these are hardworking people who deserve at least to be heard as far as their pain goes. So I wouldn't downplay that. 
is higher food prices, higher rental rates. Um, and I think the biggest problem for the economy is inflation. So what he's touching here on this point, I got to give him credit a little bit. He's talking about higher food prices, higher, higher, housing, or higher housing prices and whatnot. Uh, going from my previous point, and I agree with him, the biggest problem is inflation because look at what Walmart just said in their financials. They basically said, hey, nobody's buying electronics and nobody's buying apparel. We're going to have to reduce prices. The margins are going to go down. And consequently, what they're actually saying, we're going to have to lay off people. In fact, they let everybody know a couple of days later they're laying off people. Target has the same issue. So all of these people who will be laid off, they're going to be spending less on apparel and electronics. So this vicious cycle of people spending less, getting more people fired, then less people spending less, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All this vicious cycle is basically about to put the economy into recession. So I think that is a huge problem. And inflation is roaring. It's continued to rage. And, yeah, I agree with uh, that. Unfortunately, the steps taken by the Federal Reserve have not uh, been effective. You know, since uh, you know, June, the first 75 basis point increase, Financial conditions have eased enormously. You know, stock markets up. You know, depending on the market, uh, you know, 10, 11 percent and more. Um, you know, the you look at you know the two-year Treasury, which is a kind of good indicator of uh, kind of where Fed funds should be over the next eight quarters, is under 2.9 percent. And uh, you know, with the Fed today at you know, call it two and a half percent, basically the market's saying that the the Fed Fed funds will average only 40 basis points above the current uh, rate over the next uh, two years, and that implies really no financial tightening at all. Uh, just at the last meeting. Uh, Jerome Powell said, you know, that the Fed was now comfortable that it reached a sort of neutral uh, level of rates, uh, which, again, a fairly extraordinary statement right. in a, a world with 9% inflation. So I okay, so here I have to give him credit. I agree 100% to everything he said. Hit the nail on the freaking head. 100% agree with him. Now, look, what he's saying here, let's start with the end. He's saying saying the 2.5% is a neutral rate with 9% inflation is extraordinary. When he says extraordinary, what he means is basically... You must be smoking, my guy. What the hell? Two and a half percent? Now, what he's actually referring to, there's this very well-known rule as far as how to measure the proper amount of rate increases you need to battle inflation. It's called the Taylor rule. You basically take, a, it's an oversimplified mathematical equation, which I'm going to share here, but this is how the simplified version works. You take the base rate, which is 2%. You measure the difference from the current rate, which is 9%. The difference is 7%. You multiply that by 2. You get the rate you need, which is 14% in our case. This is Paul Volcker level of interest. Obviously, the U.S. cannot enact that since they have $30 trillion of debt, $21 trillion of GDP, and $4 trillion of annual tax income. So raising interest rates is going to put the U.S. into a spiral of debt payments which is going to pretty much cut into everything else we're spending on. So that's the whole conundrum here. And what he's saying here is basically, well, at least don't bullshit us. You come out and you say, well, 2.5% is neutral because you're afraid to go higher. And you're causing the entire market to basically say, party on, Wayne, party on, Garth, and basically go back to party mode saying, hey, the Fed is done. And that's why you're seeing the rally in the market. And I think he's right about that. The Fed is definitely... Um, Missing the point here as far as uh, I, 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 do, I like what John Powell said in this pro press conference the last time he spoke because he did say uh, we're not done yet. And he did say we're, you know, inflation uh, is our prime um, goal here, et cetera, et cetera, and all that good stuff. He said all the right things, but I agree here with Ackman uh, that by saying that little sentence that two and a half is neutral, it's pretty much like saying, well, we don't see more rate hikes real soon. And it contradicted a lot of the other stuff he said, because he also said the next rate hike is also going to be quite significant. So, you know, the market chose to interpret that 2.5% neutral as a bullish sign instead of him saying, well, there's more rate hikes coming and we're not done yet and it's blah, 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 blah. So Bill is saying, hey, Jerome, by saying the 25 is neutral, you screwed up and now the entire market is back to party mode. And they're about to have, a, I guess, a very rude awakening. I think the problem is... And, and so what, what would yeah. you be advocating the Fed do then? I think the Fed has to be aggressive in raising rates, getting to a, you know, yeah. something probably with a you know, high threes, four handle, checking in and seeing how things are going. But I think rates are going to have to stay 4% plus for the foreseeable future. You know, well, the reason he isn't saying 14%, by the way, which would you know theoretically be the ones you need, is because he also knows what we just talked about. The U.S. debt is way too high for that. Even four plus percent is going to be a fucking nightmare. But at least, at least at four plus, we can start having a conversation about some sort of neutrality. 
Uh, he's re- he's a realist. I agree with him here. We cannot afford 14%. This is in the 1980s. Paul Volcker's policy is just not going to work here with so much debt. So what he's saying here, at least let's be pragmatic. At least we got to get to 4 plus percent. 12, 18 months or so in order to, to kill this inflation. They may need to take rates higher. And uh, I think that's the, the biggest risk to the markets is that people are not pricing that in. Uh, I 100% agree with him. So, so f- I started off be calling him horseshit and a lot of things he said. But for the past few points, he's been spot on. Yep. So the way the market works is basically they pick the most bullish scenario, which is 2.5% is neutral. Let's go party time. And when the Fed actually comes out and says, hey, we need to go to 4 plus percent, it's going to be like the hammer coming down, basically poof, killing the party. And the entire market is going to have this rude awakening. It's probably going to take, you know, six months to, in my opinion, beginning of 2023. But uh, I'm assuming Bill has his own timeline. Let's hear it. And I think the uh, we need to, you know, the Fed has to take its foot off the accelerator. And when you can borrow money, uh, based off a uh, you know, two and a quarter to two and a half percent SOFA rate, that's the you know kind of base rate for for borrowers, and, and inflation is nine percent, and it's going to be persistent, certainly in the mid single digits for a long time. You borrow as much money as you can, and so the current prevailing level of rates is you know amping up the economy, which is why we are having uh, the inflation that we are having now, okay. coupled Bill, with the other global factors, of course. Bill, do you like the Chips Act? Do you like the uh, the other reconciliation bill that Manson is backing? Does a lot of, you know, we think of the Fed, but a lot of times the Fed is just enabling uh, whatever administration, whatever Congress is doing. You know, they got to keep rates low. They get, they're, they're sort of like partners in crime, if you will, for at least, you know, in, in my view, for some of the, the profligate spending that goes on. Do you, do you like either one of those pieces of legislation? No, I think there's merit to what you say. I think what got us into this mess was an extra couple trillion dollars of stimulus. Uh, that was intent. Okay, I'll explain what he's saying here, and uh, I'm going to cut the clip short. It doesn't really matter. What Bill is saying here, look, guys, we're going to spend so much money on this cheap tax. Uh, cheap tax. Cheap ta- Is there a thing called cheap tax? I want the cheap tax, please. <laughs> on the Chips Act. Sorry. Can't, can't learn to speak, my guy. Uh, shout out to Amit. Um, so he's basically saying we're going to throw another bunch of money at the market hoping to fix some sort of a problem we have with supply chains. But let's not forget, the whole reason we're in this mess is because you guys gave out too much money. He's basically in the school of thought of Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman has multiple lectures from the 70s, 50 years ago. If you listen to them now, they sound as relevant as if they were basically filmed, I don't know, six months ago. It's just pretty insane. So he's basically sharing the same thing that, you know, the same idea that Milton Friedman basically said just 50 years ago, which is that inflation is caused by printing money. The only thing that causes inflation isn't some Arab chic or the OPEC uh, a cartel or gas station owners, definitely not all companies. It's just basically the fact that you're printing money and throwing more money at the market at this juncture might not be the best idea. Uh, I kind of agree with him here. So look, there you go. Bill Ackman, don't forget, the man has an agenda. We just don't know it yet. But, you know, we talked about certain things which he said, uh, absolute bullshit. We talked about certain things that he said, which was point on. And we also showed a little hint where he said what's the timing he's looking at. Where he said, well, the market is great for the past six, sorry, for the next six to 12 months. So he's basically saying, hey, everything's great for now. And then he said six to 12 months. I don't know if, I guess your projections, your predictions are as good as his because I don't think it's really that credible to try and time the market. But as far as more macro kind of outlook to this, look at it this way. Bill is saying something very interesting. And again, I don't know if his timeline is right or mine or yours. You know, nobody knows. Nobody's the oracle. What he's saying is macro kind of makes sense to me, which is, look, we're in a state of recovery right now in the stock market. So everything is doing better and better and better, right? So this isn't based on some sort of good fundamentals, right? Since inflation is still here, supply chains are still screwed, everything is still bad, but the stock market is starting to go up again. So at some point, there's going to be a cognitive dissonance between the way the stock market has went up and the way everything else fundamentally is basically in the toilet. And when the Fed comes out and pops this bubble by raising interest rates to a higher level than what the market expects, it's basically going to cause a stock market pullback. And to me, it makes sense. It's just, I don't know where it's going to happen. But I thought I'd react to that because, you know, Bill Ackman's in the news again. So let's talk about it. As always, you can agree, you can disagree. You can talk about my inability to speak. Woo, so many mistakes today. It is what it is. Deal with my, you know, bad grammar and bad English. Eh, I'm not here for that. I'm just here to give you the info and my insights. See you in the next video.